Sweden has drawn a firm line under one of Europe's most closely watched artillery refreshes, handing its army a fully modernized archer capability that now centers on the RMMB HX 28x8 truck. The final batch of 155mm systems brought to the version C baseline completes a multi year effort to migrate away from the original Volvo A30D 6x6 articulated carrier and unify the fleet around a common, road optimized chassis. The decision is more than an engineering preference. It reflects how northern European armies are recalibrating for longer road marches, faster repositioning between widely dispersed firing points, and the sustained logistics lines that modern high-tempo operations demand. At the heart of the Swedish program is the conversion of 24 legacy archers to version C, a standard that rehosts the automated howitzer on the HX 28x8 and folds in a new command support architecture. In practice, that means an already fast, shoot-and-scoot system gains better on-road endurance, payload headroom, and parts commonality with a widely fielded military truck family. The gun's core strengths, automated loading, rapid multiple-round simultaneous impact missions, and minimal time exposed at the firing position, remain intact. What changes is how confidently the platform can surge along highways, survive sustained use on mixed surfaces, and integrate digital fires data with other nodes in Sweden's command network. The modernization dovetails with a September 2023 contract for 48 factory new archers on the same HX 28x8 chassis, a deal valued at roughly US $500 million. That order ensures the Swedish army will not juggle conflicting support chains for different carriers. Training, spares, and deployment planning now converge on a single configuration, reducing friction and cost while improving readiness. Uniformity is not glamorous, but it is decisive in wartime. Gunners cycle through a standard crew drill, maintainers troubleshoot familiar components, logisticians stock fewer unique repair parts. The payoff shows up in higher availability rates and quicker recovery from battle damage, advantages that are difficult to quantify in peacetime spreadsheets but become obvious when units are sustaining daily fire missions. Sweden's equipment officials underscore that this is not modernization for its own sake. The army has already proofed the HX2 mounted system in live fire sequences at the Bowdoin range, validating both the mechanical integration and the human factors that matter under pressure, cab ergonomics for long road legs, stability during rapid deployment, and the reliability of the updated command support suite. Those early shots are an important milestone in their own right. Real crews, firing live ammunition, shorten the feedback loop and expose any integration issues while the program still has time and resources to correct them. In parallel, leadership has framed the version C rollout as a step change in operational effectiveness, a claim that rests on tangible gains in mobility and digital connectivity rather than on abstract performance charts. The path to this endpoint has also redistributed archer capacity across Europe. Of the 48 systems Sweden originally mounted on Volvo 6x6 carriers, 14 were sold to the British Army in March 2023 as part of London's interim artillery replacement push, and 8 were transferred to Ukraine. Those decisions carry strategic weight. The British acquisition helped cover a time gap while the UK advances its own long-range fires programs, keeping trained crews on a modern, automated platform. The Ukrainian transfer, meanwhile, fed an urgent battlefield need for highly mobile 155mm fires that can exploit short windows to strike and then rapidly displace under persistent surveillance and counter-battery threat. Both moves illustrate how Sweden's industrial and policy choices ripple into allied force structures and the broader deterrence fabric on NATO's northern flank. Stockholm has complemented redistribution with new procurement aimed at sustaining allied capacity. In April 2025, the government announced the purchase of 18 additional Archer systems from BAE Systems as part of its 18th support package for Ukraine. That order signals a long-horizon commitment to keep modern Western artillery in the fight and to backfill as necessary. It also highlights the industrial ecosystem that makes these policy choices executable. BAE Systems Bofors anchors the gun system, 
while Rainmetal Man Military Vehicle supplies the HX28 by 8 chassis. The pairing blends a Scandinavian lineage in automated howitzers with a German-Austrian heavy truck family that many European militaries already operate, simplifying joint training and cross-border sustainment should contingencies require mixed logistic solutions. The HX2 Foundation deserves emphasis because chassis selection shapes everything from crew fatigue to operational reach. An 8x8 military truck with a mature support network offers predictable highway speeds, efficient fuel usage relative to payload, and robust options for armor kits and auxiliary power. For a system like Archer, which wins its survivability through speed of emplacement and displacement, shaving minutes off road moves and resupply cycles is as consequential as squeezing a few extra meters from maximum range. The new command support framework amplifies those gains, tightening the loop from target acquisition to fire mission execution and back to assessment. In an era of ubiquitous sensors and contested electromagnetic terrain, that cohesion within the kill chain is as important as any raw ballistic metric. From a doctrine standpoint, Sweden's artillery roadmap mirrors a broader European trend, a pivot toward dispersed, networked fires that can mass effects without massing formations. The version C Archer package slots naturally into this approach. Units can echelon shooters across multiple firing points, exploit the HX2's road mobility to retask on the fly, and synchronize with higher-level fires planners through improved digital interfaces. Training pipelines benefit from a single baseline as well, allowing instructors to standardize crew procedures and exploit simulation more effectively. Over time, those efficiencies compound, turning today's procurement choices into tomorrow's operational tempo. There is, finally, a political dimension. Completing the upgrade handbacks on October 30, 2025 allowed officials to mark a definable milestone, not only for domestic accountability but also as a signal to partners and potential adversaries that Sweden's artillery arm is both modern and scalable. It is scalable because the upgraded cohort aligns with new build deliveries, creating headroom for force growth without fragmenting the fleet. It is modern because the upgrades were not confined to hardware swap-outs, they embedded contemporary command support functions and validated them in live-fire conditions. Public remarks from program leadership have emphasized that the transition improves combat effectiveness and the structure of the program, combining conversions, fresh production, and early user trials, supports that assessment. Taken together, Sweden's Archer journey is a case study in pragmatic modernization, convert what you own to a common standard, buy new to that same standard at meaningful scale, validate early with troops, and integrate policy choices that strengthen allies while concentrating your own logistics. The result is a 155mm force narrowed onto the HX28 by 8 better connected across the command architecture, and already exercised on domestic ranges. As Europe rearms and refines its approach to long-range fires, this is the kind of quietly disciplined program that moves combat credibility from PowerPoint to the field. If 2026 brings more complex exercises and deeper multinational integration, Sweden's artillery will enter that phase with the mobility, cohesion, and industrial backing to keep pace, and, when called upon, to set it.